Oh boy. The next episode of Pokemon Horizons, episode 55, is shaping up to be freaking amazing. Why? Well, because Lico, Roy, and Dot will face none other than the Elite Four of Paldea. As if this wasn't exciting enough, since novice trainers that just got terrastal and had their first gym battle couldn't possibly take on the Elite Four, they will have backup in the form of gym leaders. Fittingly, the very same ones they faced for their basics test. Better yet, the Elite Four will not be outnumbered in terms of Pokemon, since they will use two each. So these will be double battles through and through. I cannot emphasize enough just how exciting these battles will be. Like seriously, you cannot have a better setup for a battle than a main character plus a gym leader versus a member of the Elite Four. While Ash faced many Elite Four members and even champions, he never did so with a gym leader by his side. At least, I'm pretty sure he didn't. So Horizons is definitely going for something we haven't seen before, making all of this all the more hype-worthy. Now let's talk about matchups what they mean, and some of the details of the battles we can discern from the preview. First, Roy and Brashius will use Fuecoco and Dolive respectively to face Hassel, who will use Baxcalibur, his ace, and a Pokemon that will be making its anime debut, and Flapple. Both of these are neutral to fire given their other type apart from Dragon. So Fuecoco won't be such a bad choice, especially since he knows disarming boys. Though I will say that it is disappointing that Roy will not use Kilowattro. Like one of your Pokemon just evolved bro, use it. I do however understand wanting to use your best Pokemon to face the Elite Four. Also, we have seen Fuecoco terrastalize, which he will do against Hassel, while Kilowattro has yet to terrastalize, so we don't even know its Terra type. Speaking of questionable choices, don't know why Brashes will use Dolive instead of Pseudo Wudo. I get that maybe for the sake of variety it makes sense, but considering who he is up against, using his ace would be more sensible, especially since it has the type advantage over Baxcalibur while Dolive has the type disadvantage against it instead. As for how the battle will go, I love that Baxcalibur is seen taking one of Fuecoco's fire type moves head on clearly leveraging and taking advantage of its ability, Thermal Exchange. Other than this, a big orb is seen in the middle of the arena, which will likely be the product of a clash of powerful moves. Additionally, I have to mention that since Roy's ultimate goal is to face a legendary dragon, Battling a Dragon-type specialist with a pseudo-legendary dragon will be great practice for him. Moreover, Brash's facing Hassel is also significant, given their relationship and the fact that they are both artists. Moving on, the next matchup is Iono and Dot, who will predictably use Belly Bolt and Quaxly, versus Poppy, who will use Tinkaton, her ace, and another Pokemon making its Horizons debut, and Copperaja. We don't see much from this battle in the preview, only that Tinkaton and Copperaja will do some crazy combo attacks. It's safe to assume that Dot will use Terrastal as well, since Roy will use it too. Though it's unclear if the Gym Leaders and the Elite Four will do the same. I would assume the Elite Four will, even if they likely don't need to. As for the Gym Leaders, well, I actually don't know if they can. I haven't done double battles in the games with other people, so I don't know if both trainers on one side can Terrastal in the same battle. If they can, I could see the gym leaders terrastalizing as well. I mean, they do need all the help they can get to deal with the Elite Four. 
But going back to Iono and Dot vs. Poppy, I think that this is another fitting matchup. Mostly because Dot has a tink -a tink while Poppy has a tink -a ton Dot sadly won't use tink -a tink but hopefully she gets to see and interact with her final evolution. Ideally, this will inspire her to evolve all the way someday. At the very least, I imagine that she will love Tinkaton's much bigger and cooler hammer. Next, we have Liko, whose opponent and partner are not confirmed in the preview. However, it's safe to assume that Kathy will battle alongside her. And her opponent is revealed by the title of the next episode, which is Liko vs. Rika Beyond the Battle. So Liko will have an episode dedicated to her battle. Like Roy, even though her second Pokemon just evolved, she will use her starter. This is the most likely scenario, and it would be a good choice since Rika specializes in Ground-type Pokemon. As for which Pokemon she will use, well, going by the opening, one of them will for sure be Clodsire, who is her ace. Her second could be any of the other Pokemon she uses in the games, except for Whiskash, since I can't see it performing well out of water. As for Kathy, she will probably use Teddy Ursa. Like Iono, she will use her ace, the only Pokemon she has used in the anime, and the Pokemon she has in the opening. Two of these apply to Brashes too, the first and the third. The second doesn't, which is why he has an option. And again, for variety's sake, he will use Dolib. Obviously, I cannot really say much more about this battle since it's not shown in this preview. We will have to wait for the next preview to know more. Finally, we know that there are of course 4 Elite Four members, but we only have 3 main characters. Larry is left as the odd man out. Who will he battle? Well, judging by the preview, it will be Coral, which is interesting. And her partner will apparently be Kofu, who will make his Horizons debut. I'm assuming that he was who Koro faced for her basics test. This battle was not shown in the preview either, so I can only speculate about it. Koro will likely use Glalie, because duh, she always does, while Kofu will likely use Walk Trio, since it is the Pokemon he has in the opening. As for Larry, going by the opening again, he will use Staraptor, which is his ace, and Flamigo. This should be an interesting battle since Coral has the type advantage and I just don't see her working with Kofu or with anyone really. Plus his personality, and Larry's for that matter, are the perfect opposites to hers. So their interactions should be hilarious. Like with Liko's battle though, I can't really say much more since the preview does not show it. I have to add though that Tulip is listed as one of the characters that will appear in this episode, so she will be making her anime debut. However, she is not in the preview, therefore we can't confirm this. At the same time, Kathy is not listed, so maybe she won't be Liko's partner after all. However, she is listed on the following episode, so will she or won't she? Can't say. But then what will Tulip's role be? Could she be Liko's partner? Or maybe Koro's and Kofu is Liko's partner instead? I mean, she appears to greet him in the preview. I really can't say at this point. Also, episode 56 lists Claude Sire as Terrastalized. So Rika, at least, will use Terrastal, meaning that the other Elite Four might do the same. So yeah, those are the matchups, why some of them are fitting, how the battles might go, etc. The only thing left for me to do is predict their outcomes. Well, there is a reason why I left this for the end instead of offering my speculation after discussing each battle. I feel that the Elite Four will win. 
Obviously, they are stronger than the gym leaders, and while they will have help, it's from trainers that cannot really tip the scales in their favor too much. I mean, Liko and Dot could not even win against gym leaders, so they have absolutely no shot of defeating the Elite Four even with backup. Coral is, in my eyes, the only one that has a chance since I feel she is stronger than Liko and company. But again, because she likely will not cooperate with her partner, she will probably lose too. Now losing in this situation is of course fine, both narratively and realistically. The deck is stacked way too much against Liko and friends. It's way too early for them to face the Elite Four so it's impossible to fault them for losing, especially since the point is not for them to emerge victorious, but to gain even more knowledge, experience, and training. Facing the Elite Four is an amazing chance for them to rise up to even greater heights, an awesome learning experience that will let them improve even more. So yeah, even though the outcomes are pretty much etched in stone, these battles should all be extremely exciting and thrilling, which is why I am absolutely eager to watch them when this episode airs on June 21. As always, I will review it once it does, so please stay tuned for that. But that's the video. Please share your thoughts in the comments below and click the links on screen to see my recent episode review. I will see you over there. Thank you so very much for watching.